My name is Guillaume Dumont. We're going to be introducing hip arthroscopy using ConMed's new Paradigm system. The ConMed tactile needle is designed to protect the articular cartilage upon entry through the hip capsule. And as soon as the needle penetrates the capsule, the spring-loaded portion will deploy and it provides a blunt portion of the needle that will not uh, damage the articular cartilage as readily as a typical spinal needle. So here we're overlaying over the top of the skin on the hip to localize its position. So I like this position. All right, so I'm entering the skin now, and I can feel the retractable portion of the needle pushing into the needle, penetrating the skin. And the next thing I'm going to feel for is the resistance of the hip capsule. My goal is to insert the needle in the capsule at the midpoint between the acetabulum and the femoral head. If I give a little bit more pressure, now the needle is going to go through the capsule. And as soon as the needle penetrates into the capsule, the retractable portion of the needle projects itself out of the needle. I like to inject fluid into the hip to distend the capsule further. Next, we'll insert a nitinol wire in the spinal needle and remove the spinal needle over the wire. I'm inserting a cannulated switching stick over the spinal needle after I create an incision in the skin. I feel the switching stick enter the capsule. So we're going to insert a 4.6 millimeter cannula over the switching stick using gentle rotational force and then remove the trocar and insert our camera. We're going to create an anterior portal. The traditional anterior portal is created at the intersection of the tip of the greater trochanter and the line drawn distally from the anterior superiliac spine, which would be here. Many surgeons have chosen to create this portal slightly more distally. We're going to put it in this position. Make a small incision over the nitinol wire. It's important to make the incision very superficial in this area because of the branches of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which we need to protect as much as possible. We'll slide a switching stick over this nitinol wire to enter the joint and then we'll slowly and carefully advance the 4.6 millimeter cannula over the switching stick as we watch it intraarticularly to avoid any chondral injury. At this juncture, we have the opportunity to switch our camera into the anterior portal to verify the position of our initial portal, which is created without direct visualization. To create the capsulotomy, we're going to use the ConMed retractable blade that can be inserted in the joint safely. In deployment of the retractable blade, the tube or the outer sheath is the moving part the blade is actually not moving, which increases the safety of this instrument. We simply make back and forth motions centered between the femoral head and the labrum to create the cut between the anterior and the anterolateral portal. The capsulotomy can also be extended slightly posteriorly depending on the need for access. And once we've completed the capsulotomy cut, we simply retract the blade within the sheath and we can insert our cannula back over the retractable capsulotomy blade in a safe fashion. We're going to demonstrate use of the new ConMed retractable hook the hook blade is a great tool in this situation to really well visualize that bridge, wrap the blade around it, and pull back, thus completing the capsulotomy. Once the capsulotomy is complete, we can protract the sheath over the blade and it can be safely removed from the joint without damaging intraarticular or extraarticular structures. One of the most critical portions of hip arthroscopy is preservation of the capsule during the initial exposure of the joint. Here we can see the capsulotomy leaflets with the proximal leaflet here on the right distal leaflet here on the left. Protecting these leaflets for later repair is important. All this work is done prior to insertion of the easy switch cannula, at which point you will no longer have to use the retractable sheath and the instruments can be used within the joint interchangeably with ease. We use the shaver to create the capsule labral junction, which is the area where we're going to be able to visualize the pincer morphology that will be later resected within the, the procedure. A useful tool in this portion of the procedure is the radio frequency ablation wand. The configuration of the tip of the 50 degree ablation wand allows for separation of the capsular and labral tissue in this area. The initial step for insertion of the easy switch cannula involves insertion of the reference guide through the metallic cannula. This is a blunt tip instrument that can be safely inserted and we can retract the cannula and remove it at this point. With the reference tool within the joint, we see a mark which indicates where the measurement will be taken from. We can line it up with the capsule. We can then use the index finger adjacent to the skin to identify the length required for the is easy switch. On this particular hip, I'm measuring eight. We can easily see the markings on the easy switch and easily with a pair of scissors cut the easy switch at length eight. We now have an easy switch that is at the perfect length for this particular patient. To insert the easy switch, we insert the obturator in advance until the tip of the obturator is at an optimal position where the laser etching matches with the distal extent of the easy switch. We can then loosen the thumb screw on the handle and advance the handle until the male end of the handle connects with the proximal extent of the easy switch. We then tighten the thumb screw 
easy switch and its Opry are then inserted over the reference tool with a gentle twisting motion as we visualize the intraarticular portion of the joint. Once we see the distal portion of the operator, we can retract the easy switch reference tool and give gentle clockwise motion so that the proximal threads engage the soft tissues of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. We can then retract the operator and handle and then remove the reference tool. We see that we have an easy access into and out of the joint without damage to the surrounding soft tissue structures. To begin insertion of the easy switch through the initial anterolateral portal, we then insert our arthroscope through the anterior portal easy switch, which creates a nice seal around the scope, not allowing fluid to egress around the camera. And then in similar fashion, we can get the reference tool and insert it through the cannula of the anterolateral portal. We can retract the cannula and remove it. We place the laser etching at the level of the capsule and then can obtain our measurement and seeing that we again need an eight centimeter easy switch. The easy switch is then inserted over the reference tool. Once the proximal threads engage the skin, we can use a gentle clockwise motion with slight pressure. And we see intraarticularly the easy switch arriving at its optimal position at the level of the hip capsule. By creating a pathway into the joint through the soft tissues that is of the least length possible, we allow for best motion of the instruments within the joint throughout the procedure. With the easy switch in place, we can now switch between the anterolateral and anterior portal without the use of a slotted cannula. And that's really just very easy.